thank you and good evening. I'll go over the format. As we know, Dr. Shermer is going to be going first, and followed by Kent Hoven. They start with a 25-minute presentation, and Dr. Hoven will give 25 minutes, then 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 4 minutes, 4 minutes. Then we're going to have a five-minute break, and then question and answer. And how the question and answer is going to work is that they're passing out written forms. So the questions will be written and then chosen and then read to the debaters. And the format for the question and answer is the person who the question is directed to gets two minutes and the other person gets one minute to respond. Now, and again, if you do cheer or yell for your favorite, you're going to be taking up their time. So please be quiet while they're talking. Let them get their presentations out and let's all be respectful and have a good time tonight on the creation versus evolution debate. And just by who's passing out the questions, uh, the papers, where are they at? Okay. Well, I'm sure they're in good hands and they'll be passed out during the debate. And again, five minute break before the question and answer. Let's begin with Dr. Shermer. How we doing? Oh, wow. Hope the fire marshal's not here. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I don't know. It's just sort of a psychic hunch I have. I got the feeling there's slightly more believers than non-believers here. I, I don't <laughs> Just a show of hands, how many of you believe in uh, a God, a personal God, like the Judeo-Christian God? <laughs> okay, well, um, oh, look at the time. And uh, <laughs> I believe there was a Laker game on tonight. Uh, or was that last night? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am Michael Shermer, the director of the Skeptic Society, the publisher of Skeptic Magazine. We were handing out some propaganda, I mean literature earlier. Uh, if you didn't get any, we do have a table in the back. My associates, Matt and David, are back there, happy to, to uh, help you out there. I am really glad to see so many people. It's a beautiful night. You don't have to be here. You could be out enjoying the great uh, outdoors, but uh, we appreciate that. Obviously, there's great interest in the subject, a subject we deal a lot with at Skeptic. Um, we deal with it because it's a hugely popular American subject. Only in America, with a few other scattered places and a tiny bit in New Zealand, uh, is creationism even a subject of debate. But here it is. We are in America. This is a, a subject near and dear to many people's hearts, so we deal a lot with this. Um, basically, skepticism, science, are the same. That is, a skeptic is not a position that you take. It's not a noun. I'm not a skeptic like I'm a thing. Oh, you're one of those skeptics. You don't believe anything. I believe lots of things, like, for example, evolution. It's not a position that you take. It's just an approach to claims. For example, when I investigated the Holocaust deniers, they thought, well, we're skeptics. We're skeptic of the Holocaust. And he's a skeptic, so we have a brother in arms. But in fact, I ended up being skeptical of the skeptics. So skepticism is just an approach. You can be a skeptic of a claim. You can be a skeptic of the skeptics. What we're after here is to look for natural explanations for phenomenon. For example, it's entirely possible that aliens landed on uh, Farmer Bob's Field in Puckerbrush, Kansas and carved out skeptic.com as a promotional gimmick for our organization. However, I think it's more likely that we assume that this was um, created by Photoshop. That is, before we say something uh, is out of this world, we have to first make sure that it's not in this world. So, for example, it's possible that our governor <coughs> was successful in his campaign because aliens backed him. And, and by the way, that's Danny DeVito as uh, Cruz Bustamante, which I thought was very clever. Uh, I should know, parenthetically, I've been tracking these uh, alien images for about 20 years. This is the first alien I've ever seen that's been working out with biceps and triceps. <laughs> Arnold's got the aliens pumping iron. And by the way, you don't mind the informality of, it's a little warm in here, hey? A few bodies. So they got the air cranked up if you're hot. I guess this is, this is as good as it's going to get. So uh, now when we talk about evolution creation, the first thing we need to decide, or that you need to decide if you're open to the question, which creationism are you going to embrace? Here's a useful continuum. I've been debating creationists for nearly 20 years of all stripes. There's flat earthers, geocentrists, young earth creationists, old earth creationists, gap creationists, creationists that believe there was a gap between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2 to allow for geological time, day-age creationism, that the days of Genesis represent geological epochs, therefore allowing for an old earth, 
progressive creationism, evolutionary creationism. These are creationists who believe that God operates through the laws of nature. Theistic evolution, which is largely part of the, the intelligent design movement, and finally down to the end of just materialistic evolutionists. So you need to ask yourself, which one is Kent Hovind part of? Which, which creationism are you interested in hearing about? Which one will be presented tonight? There's a bunch of different ones, and they all have different arguments. And interestingly, they uh, disagree amongst themselves. You can go to, for example, Answers in Genesis, which is a very conservative Christian creationist organization that disagrees with most of what uh, my debate opponent will say tonight. So there is great diversity here. You have to choose, pick and choose, and read, and figure out which part of the um, uh, creationism you want to embrace, if at all. Now, first of all, we have to recognize that, in fact, most people uh, embrace evolution. 96 million American Christians accept evolution. In a 2001 Gallup poll, 37% of all Americans agreed with the statement that human beings developed over millions of years from less advanced forms of life and that God uh, guided the process. Since 90% of Americans roughly are Christians, that means 96 million American Christians believe in evolution. Now, it's not that that makes it right, but that at least if you're a Christian who wonders whether it's okay to accept the theory of evolution, obviously it's quite okay. In fact, a billion, a billion Catholics, who are sometimes skeptics, uh, accept evolution. The Pope himself, John Paul II, in 1996 encyclical, said, new knowledge has led to the recognition that the theory of evolution is more than a hypothesis. It is indeed remarkable that this theory has been progressively accepted by researchers following a series of discoveries in various fields of knowledge. The convergence, this is an important statement, the convergence neither sought nor fabricated, this isn't a conspiracy on the part of scientists, it just happened this way, of the results of work that was conducted independently is in itself a significant argument in favor of the theory. I'm going to play this up quite a bit tonight. This convergence from independent lines of inquiry, independent of each other. These guys aren't meeting on the weekends to say, look, we got to get our story straight because that Kent Hovind's out there, uh, you know, uh, st stumping the uh, debate circuit. They arrived at it independently. The Pope, by the way, in 96 was responding to an early, earlier cyclical in the 1950s in which that Pope said, uh, it's possible evolution may be true. We should be open to science and not just reject it. And this Pope said it is indeed true. In fact, even our ex-president Jimmy Carter, an evangelical Christian, calls himself a born-again Christian. Uh, when uh, a couple of months ago the state of Georgia required that textbook, biology textbooks in public high schools have a little sticker in them warning the students about evolution. As a Christian, President Carter said, a trained engineer and a scientist and a professor at Emory University, I'm embarrassed by Superintendent Kathy Cox's attempts to censor and distort the education of Georgia's students. The existing and long-standing use of the word evolution in our state's textbook has not adversely affected Georgians' belief in the omnipotence of God as creator of the universe. There can be no incompatibility between Christian faith and proven facts concerning geology, biology, and astronomy. There's no need to teach that the stars can fall out of the sky and land on a flat earth in order to defend our religious 